All right, welcome back. Uh, Mr. Matthew Bojibola joins us now. He's the Director of Tax Policy for FIRS. Good morning, and thank you for joining us today. Well, about this Good. tenancy, lease Good. agreements, I know you know, there are lots of reactions across the country about it already. Uh, different interpretations concerning how will we respond to this. People are already waiting to see what the landlords will tell them or these agreements. So go ahead and talk to us about this policy, clearly what it specifies and how to proceed. Uh, thanks very much uh, and good morning viewers. Um, the stamp duty is, um, is not something new in Nigeria. Uh, it's what we've always had with us um, as far back as 1923. Um, the current law that we have um, were actually enacted way back in 1939 even though it has undergone a number of amendments, uh, the most recent one be uh, in the Finance Act of 2019. Um, now, with respect to um, the, the uh, rates on tenancy, um, let me state clearly that um, the rates that we have published are the rates that have always been in the books. The last time that the rates were reviewed were, uh, was actually way back in 2002, and this had been in the public domain since then. Uh, all the FRS had done recently is to bring this to the consciousness of the people based on several inquiries which the service had re received um, from um, uh, stakeholders who want to implement, who want to comply with the law. Um, and specifically as to the um, tenancy, um, there had been a number of uh, rates uh, in the public space. Um, I read in one of the newspapers yesterday that 60% um, um, stamp duties on, on, on rent. Uh, this is absolutely not true. Uh, what we have in the law, uh, which the FRS has publicized, are uh, in three th categories. One are uh, rents that are between one year and seven years, uh, which goes for 0.78%, which is less than 1%. And then we have those um, uh, tenancies between seven years and 21 years, which is 3%. And tenancies that are beyond 21 years are 6%, not 60, 6%. And when you look at the individual um, house renters, uh, um, uh, you hardly get an individual renting a house for 21 years in Nigeria. I mean, the highest probably you will have is between one and two years. Um, and I know, also know that some state governments have pegged um, tenancy uh, tenor um, to not more than one year so that um, uh, individuals are not subjected to excessive charges by landlords. So uh, when you then look at that, um, so the highest uh, uh, an individual could pay in respect of, of, of tenancy for stamp duty, uh, let's assume somebody pays the rent of 100,000, for example, uh, the highest that individual will pay is 780 naira as stamp duties. So the, there, there are a lot of uh, misunderstanding of the publications and uh, of the FRS. Well, maybe you uh, now want to, uh, to uh, give us a little and more, and just one moment, uh, Mr. Yeah. Maybe you just want to educate us a little because um, in the circular that you released, 7.0, um, one of the recommendations there reads, tenancy or lease, which is ad valorem at a fee of 6% of the tenancy or lease value that is six naira for every hundred naira. There is no year mentioned in that particular one that was released by your organization. So please explain why people will not term that, you know, to mean that it is uh, six percent of the of the rent. Six naira for every hundred naira. That's something. Yeah. Th thanks very much. Um, six naira in every hundred naira. Um, that is for tenancy that is above 21 years. Um, I, I, as a result of um, a number of, of, of requests for clarification, um, that, that is why uh, the service is doing what it's doing now, um, further clarifying to people. Uh, you know, when you are making out information 
um, there's a limit to which you want to use words. There's a limit to which um, you can do breakdowns. And, and for uh, uh, professionals uh, in tax arena, they, they understand the rules. Uh, um, so I, I think um, here, uh, I understand people um, taking the 6% has been absolute, and, and that is why the service has come back um, we have gone several to, to make uh, um, corrections um, to, to, to enable people to understand that the 6% is for the upper bound, people that have tenancy beyond 21 years. And you find out that you hardly find an individual in that category in the first instance. Even though they asked, look, after the stamp duty for the transactions and the banks, then you have this 0.78%. So, but just a minute, uh, uh, Doctor, let's come back to uh, Dr. Chris Davids here. Uh, he's a futurist and tax expert as well. Well, this policy, well, you know the thing with tax. They always want to look through everything and be sure that, look, ask questions as to why am I paying this and that. But this stamp duty policy, the framework of government, benchmarking it with international best practices. Are we falling short or we seem to be doing okay? Well, uh, uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, just like you've mentioned, anything uh, tax will always uh, generate uh, reactions from the public. And um, for we tax practitioners, stamp duty is uh, one of the taxes we refer to as uh, miscellaneous taxes that is negligible uh, but uh, in recent years or uh, currently it's uh, the way it has been publicized it now appears as if it's a major source of uh, uh, revenue uh, to government and especially um, uh, failing to explicitly explain the years and the rate applicable to tenancy rate however uh, I think we should understand what the purpose of stamp duty. Uh, stamp duty, the idea originally um, emanated from the Netherlands. And uh, it was first introduced in the UK in 1688. And for what purpose? When individuals wanted to give legal rights to documents, then there was the need to have government input. And that was why stamp duties was introduced. So stamp duties is to actually confer legal rights or the confirmment of legal uh, recognition on instruments. So for the purpose of stamp duty, we say an instrument is any written document. And in Nigeria, to incorporate digital transaction, the Finance Act 2019 now include electronic documents. Now, having said that, for policymakers, mm -hmm. if you want to now implement stamp duties. It should be restricted to documents or instruments that requires legal rights. So the question... Of which, what, this uh, tenancy lease agreement is part of it? So that's, that's, that's the question we need to ask now. And to benchmark it with um, other clients, the UK, for example, rents do not attract stamp duties. But if you want to buy a property, property or land, that is when you have to pay stamp duty. And they have to also grade it. This stamp duty, is it the, the house you are purchasing, is it for residential accommodation or for commercial purposes? And they went further to say, okay, even if it is for residential or commercial, it has to be a property starting from X amount okay. that will attract stamp duty. Not that any rent that or any purchase of property or land will attract mm. stamp duty. So right. there is a threshold okay. that is in, in the yeah. UK. Let's bring Mr. Bojibala in on this one as well, because you know, in addition to that, people just thought, wait a minute, so if 
you know, they're getting, uh, because you never can tell, of course there are older people who will have been renewing their rent up until that 21 years and then they want that. Even the ones that are just going in the 0.78%, it's for, if it's for residential purposes, they say, look, I'm not transacting any business from this. Why do they have to pay that stamp duty? Because it's not for business purposes. Why don't they find it in another way, perhaps as Dr. Chris David did say in other claims, if it is for your residential purposes, no stamp duty. But if it's, if you're buying it, it means that perhaps that stamp duty, in some cases, property tax can come in. Yeah, uh, th thanks very much for, for that. Um, taking it up from um, the issue of residential versus commercial, um, first thing we must understand is that taxation comes from the law. The FRS does not make the law. The law is made by the National Assembly. And so what the service does is to implement exactly what is in the law. Um, I'm sure my colleague with you will bear testimony that the issue of um, bifurcating uh, tenancy to residential and uh, commercial is not in the law. What we have in the law simply says you have a tenancy agreement, which is a dutable instrument. If it is less than seven years, the duty will be 0 0.78. If it is between seven years and 21 years, it's going to be 3%. And if it's beyond 21 years, it's going to be 6%. That, that is the way the law had identified stamp duties on tenancy. Now, if we want to move to begin to talk about threshold, um, to begin to talk about um, separating residential for commercial, then we have to go back to the National Assembly so that we could then have the law so amended. But what the FRS have done is simply implementing the law as it is. And this law, like I said to you, had been there as far back as 1939 with slight amendments in 41 and 42, I think the last amendment before 2019 was a 1952 um, uh, amendment. So the law had been there um, before I was born. Um, so what we just do is implementing the law it is, but if we find that the law is no longer uh, serving our purpose as of today, then we have elected uh, uh, honorables in the House and in the Senate, then we, we make case to change the law. I, I think that that would be my response to that. Okay, well, I, I know when you say it was there before you were born, but do you that people will see the collector, whoever is coming to collect it, is the person they will see, not knowing that it's been there way before you were born. But, uh, Mr. Davids, I mean, then the question will be, look, yes, these things have been there. You were saying it's miscellaneous, but to a lot of people, this is not the case. Especially if you comments coming through from FRS was that we need to see, uh, we don't need to rely on just oil as the major source of revenue. They have to diversify. So that is equally important for some of them. Should we at this point and maybe encourage people to take up this with the National Assembly and say, listen, in our present economic reality, this may have a second look. Yeah, you, you just heard it um, said that uh, the current framework of the stamp duty was actually enacted um, 1st April 1939. So obviously, what we have now is not in tune with the present economic uh, reality. And um, it appears, or, or based on what we are told last year, that every year, Mm -hmm. We are going to be having finance acts. Yeah. So uh, I think there is opportunity for Whenever us. The budget is yeah. The yeah. So opportunity for us now to actually overhaul or amend most of uh, these uh, uh, sections. Okay. And so we'll take a look at that. Mm -hmm. What should we do moving forward? And then even the environment, that uh, property market itself. Some concerns, equal concerns. In just a moment, please stay with us.
Well, uh, let's take this back to Abuja now. Well, one of the provisions in the uh, law, and of course the explanation, the circular that FIRS uh, just recently released, is what you call instruments and receipts liable to stamp duties, including um, electronic uh, stuff like uh, electronic media content, uh, electronic documents, files, emails, text messages, WhatsApp messages. How is that going to work? Yeah, th thanks very much. Um, um, we, we are looking at year 2020, where the manner in which we conduct businesses have changed dramatically from what it used to be in 1939. Uh, as at the time, the stamp duties uh, were introduced in, in Nigeria uh, during the colonial era. Nobody talks about text message. Nobody talks about a WhatsApp. Now, today, it is possible for you to start a business, transaction, generate receipts by electronic means, by use of social media, your WhatsApp, your whatever it is that will serve as an acknowledgement of payment. And, and I know that the courts in Nigeria also amended their rules not long ago to accept electronic documents uh, in evidence in, in trials. So uh, the tax law must also recognize the way people do business. So when we talk about, when the law talks about um, documents in the form of text messages, in the form of WhatsApp messages, in the form of emails. It's not saying that when you send a text to greet your brother or your, or your friend or any other thing that you're going to pay stamp duty, no. But if you, do a, if you send an acknowledgement of payment by way of text, that becomes a dutable instrument electronically. And also we have electronic way of stamping now it, 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 it wouldn't be a physical stamping, um, like you stick something on, 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 on a paper. So, so we also have the technology in FRS um, to be able to do electronic stamping, uh, whereby that your documents, you can preserve it. Um, just like uh, my colleague there said, that, that that instrument becomes tenable in a court of law because it bears the seal of government. So. Um, question, so in, Mr. Gwajibala, just one moment. The question, question then is, yes. you know, how, just one moment, Mr. Gwajibala. The question then is, how is it going to work? I send you a message, you send me money, and I acknowledge to you that you have sent me money. How is it being tracked? Is there some monitoring going on somewhere? WhatsApp, for instance, is supposed to be an end to end encryption. So, how is it going to be monitored? Into our phones? Are you looking into our phones? Is there a tracker somewhere? This, the, <laughs> we, we're not, we are certainly not looking into your phones. We're certainly not looking into your phones. Um, what, what, what happens is that there is a portal uh, which you generating that acknowledgement is supposed to pass through for you to stamp electronically that your message. The other alternative for you is you could actually approach the office of the FRS with your phone to say, look, I have this receipt. I want it stamped for me. And then electronically, it will be done for you. The service does not hit drop on your, on your phone. We, we, we do not hack into your phones. Uh, we have no access to your messages. Like you have said, it's, there's hand-to-hand -hand encryption. How be it there is a a channel that we have created for anyone who wants to pay stamp duty on electronic receipt, which you will voluntarily pass through. Okay, well, you know, some concerns about this because even looking through some of those documents as released by FRS, well, yes, they say they didn't make the laws, but some of them, different ones, including the power of attorney, if I'm going to give somebody power of attorney to superintend over some of my activities and transactions, I had to pay some tax uh, for that purpose. But in some other times, no, it's once you're buying that property, the facto that one is different from this one. In addition to that, 
government is talking about lifting people out of poverty. We have huge housing deficit. The market here seems unstructured. So questions about appropriateness of some of these policies. Does this, are these concerns for you? Uh, it's, it's, uh, yes, concerns for not just me, for everybody, especially uh, people looking at how we could develop the Nigerian uh, economy. And um, the challenge we've always had in Nigeria is um, policy incongruity. When uh, one body is saying this is what we want to do, pronouncement by the president wants to lift 100 million people from poverty. But you discover some of the actions, again, from agencies and all that, are actually keeping the people uh, in, in, in bondage. Um, South Africa, in Africa today, is the highest, um, is the country with the highest uh, tax revenue. But they have abolished STEM duty far back as 2009. So my advice for policy makers is when we want to introduce tax, or we should look at our taxes generally, and let's focus on taxes that have broad base that we can actually implement and get the required uh, revenue. As little as these STEM duties may be, they actually constitute burdens and add to the cost of doing business in Nigeria. Another example is we are talking about housing deficit in Nigeria. So you have people trying to come into the, that space to provide these houses. And now stamp duty is now being implemented, though it has always been there. But now uh, FRS have generated, uh, have created a portal that you can actually go in there and do it yourself. But all these actually cost or increase the cost of doing business. And uh, in market efficiency, we said, when the transaction cost is high, it creates what market inefficiency. So let's look at globally, how do we intend to raise enough taxes uh, in Nigeria by considering the taxes that we are, they have broad tax base? That is what we should be implementing or mm. we should be focusing on. Okay, uh, as we wind down, Mr. Gojibala, could you tell us, does FIRS have, do they make any input to some of these policies? For instance, if people feel some of these may not be enforceable, is this something that the FIRS may, if they find that to be the case, to also make suggestions, maybe when next the documents are being presented to the National Assembly? Uh, th thanks uh, very much. Um, uh, the FRS is an agency of government, and, and there are channels of communication um, as um, enshrined in the various um, uh, rules and, and also the laws. Um, definitely, the FRS has the opportunity to um, reach the, the policymakers and, and to make suggestions, um, but even that suggestion will be within the larger um, policy trust of the government. Uh, I am sure you were aware that Nigeria has a um, tax policy document, and that tax policy document um, um, states that consciously governments will begin to reduce direct taxes and then increase indirect taxes. And if you look at the Finance Act 2019, you, you will see a lot of that being implemented. Um, for example, now we have thresholds such that small businesses do not pay tax at all if their turnover is less than 25 million naira in a year. We have medium taxes, uh, medium classes, where um, is, if the turnover is um, be below 2 billion naira, the, the entity pays only 20% income tax. So only the large ones are actually paying 30% um, uh, 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 tax on their profits. So you will see there's a deliberate match towards reducing direct taxes, income taxes, which is actually what puts money in the pocket of the individuals, not the indirect taxes. The indirect taxes look at your spending. And so why, if you are able to keep your earnings, but when you spend, then you pay VAT, you pay stamp duty if you, if you have dutable instrument. And that is actually the shift all over Africa. That, that's what you see happening because uh, 
there's a need to make people to come out of poverty. And we saw that when you tax their income directly, the more you tax their income, the, 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 the less they have with them. But okay. the way to lift them out of poverty, just like you said, is to now say, all right, keep much of your money. But if you now have to spend money, then you can now begin to pay taxes. So, so right. this is we, one, you can see the congruency of, of, of policy um, that mm. um, um, you, was alluded to um, um, uh, previously by the, by the former speaker. All right, uh, if, if there are people who tell us that when they move money from one of their accounts to another, that is uh, interbank, they say they charge them, if it's above 10,000 naira, they say they still charge them stamp duty. So, but we need to check that and double check and be sure because that is not supposed to be the case. But we do thank you, uh, Mr. Matthew Gwajabala, Director of Tax Policy, FIRS, and Dr. Chris David, Futurist and Tax Expert. Thank you both for coming on today. Thank you.